for the McGinley's Pub in Jersey City, Mike. Open mic uh, they have one on Mondays and Thursdays. I'm hosting tonight. You know, part of trying to be a comedian, you got to get yourself out there. You got to network. You got to host some gigs. You got to do some gigs. You got a, a short list today. Some, some nights you're in front of 50,000, and some nights you're in front of some drunks at a bar. But that's life, man. This is Papi Cortijo, creator of Papi's World. He's also an actor and comedian based in New Jersey. A few months ago, he reached out because he wanted to collaborate on some camera work. He had some parody video ideas and felt I was the one to do the job. So he flew me out to New Jersey for about a week so we could work together and do some comedy shows in New York. It was such a great time. Oh, very good time. I love it. It's great. I haven't met any of these comics either, which is good. So it's a good networking too. That's what it's all about. That's how you get yourself out here, you know? I don't always do comedy with no shirt on just so that people know. It's, uh, you know some people hate it, some people like it, but Papa's uh, is the best. So. What are you going to do? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> but while I was there, it really got me thinking. There are so many dreamers in the world who don't do anything to move towards their dream. They spend a lot of time daydreaming, but go right back to the life that makes them miserable every day. It doesn't make sense. It may feel good to dream in the moment, but eventually you're going to return to reality and realize you're nowhere near it. All it takes is one step, and you're already closer than you were before. So while I was in New Jersey, I decided to have a chat with Papi Cortijo to find out what it takes to move towards your dreams. Okay, so first question yeah. that I have, mm-hmm. for the ones who don't know what you do, what is your what is the career that you're trying to to have? Man, I mean, I want to be a star. Like, you know, but, like, um, I got, I just want to do anything in entertainment, really. Like, you know, like, obviously being a star is the, the big goal. But, like, I just want to really just make money by performing and using my talents. So, I do stand-up comedy. Um, I do, like, content creation. Uh, like, I make um, music videos, like, parody videos. And then I also do, like, acting. So, yeah, I mean, the goal is to be a big actor. Like, that's really what I love to do, like, act and and okay so then what inspired you to do this so i grew up man in in church uh and and like singing and being on the altar and stage like my whole life and i always wanted to do stuff in music and then i went to this musical quote unquote music college program that was supposed to help me um do things in music but it really didn't end up panning out so i started i started working at this car dealership when I was working at this car dealership, I stood, they, I just kind of happened to start making content for them, and they started making like real commercials with me. And ever since that moment, it just clicked that like I was like once I saw myself on camera, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know? Yeah. And like yeah, so like that was like the big moment for me. Like if I could like had to put a finger on it, like this is when it happened. Like this is when I realized it. Okay. Uh, but my big inspiration, man, I'm, I've always been inspired by. Uh, like funny enough, the, the the fat comedian or the like, you know, the schlub kind of like Seth Rogen or like um, Jack Black. Jack Black is like my favorite damn near ever. Uh, Farley, and then like also like Biggie and Pun and uh, Rick Ross, like guys like that. Action Bronson. So I just I've always I've always known that I was supposed to be in some sort of way, short shape, or form like performing. Okay. Um. Another question. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not an easy road to get to where you're trying to do, right? Um, so I, along the way, what kind of sacrifices have you had to make to do this? I mean, I made a lot of sacrifices, financial sacrifices. Um, I mean, if you want to get to the nitty gritty, <laughs> I've sacrificed my quote unquote image <laughs> to certain people, like family and like you know, religious people or whatever. Um, I also kind of sacrifice, like, 
um, my living situation, even though I have a nice apartment and stuff like that. And um, I'm lucky to be in a, in a relationship with a wonderful woman who we support each other heavily. But, um, you know, she's supporting me too and, and allowing me to do this stuff. And that could be hard for a lot of people because, you know, I'm spending a lot more money sometimes than I'm making. Uh, at least in the beginning, as far as like with photo shoots or with, you know, equipment or even like tonight. Like, I, you know, I had to spend like, you know, 14 bucks on beers just to go on, just to go on stage. But, you know, there's nothing that feels right other than that if that makes sense you know like yeah it feels like i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing you know yeah no i i totally get that how many hours a week do you have to put in for this man it depends on the week because i'm um, the thing about comedians is that uh you're lazy 90 <laughs> percent of comedians are lazy you know um and so but to be good and to be great you really need to put in a lot of time and, and I got to put in at least, I'd say like at least two hours a day, just sitting down researching comedy and watching different comedians. Um, and that's fun. Like I like, I like stand up comedy and stuff like that, but it's also a job. Like, you know, you got to see what works. How does this person do it? How, how can I make something like that work for me? Um, and then all the hours that you spend on, practicing your set and trying to perfect it and see what works and then just sitting sitting at a comedy club for an open mic for two three hours to do your little five minutes like last week i was at stand up new york um and i was like number 26 or something on the list and i got there at like 6 30 and i didn't go up to like 9 30 you know and i did my five wow. minutes and then i went home and you know but it's all worth it you know that's that's what anything Anything that you want to do in life, you got to put in time and effort and work. And, and that's not even including all that video editing I got to do, you know? Because <laughs> to edit a video, the, the, to my standing, to my liking, um, can take me anywhere from 8 to 12 hours in one sitting. And that's if I'm, like, kind of half-assing even. That's not even right. me. That's not even me, like, giving it my 100%, like, you know? Right. The thing is, a lot of comedians... Um, whether they have natural talent or they have a joke or set that works, um, to be, to, to stand a, a rise above the rest and to really make a difference from the 25 other comedians that go up in the same night, you really have to bring something different. And sure, like a lot of that for me is natural, uh, like, you know, and like just me taking my shirt off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but a lot of it is also like the work and the effort and the time to be clever, to be, to write. And also to be smart, because nobody wants to laugh at stupid shit, like, all the time. Like, right. You know, that's going to laugh, that's going to work sometimes, but not always, you know? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And as an artist, um, what would you say your, like, biggest weakness is? And how do you, how, did, how have you been overcoming it? Um, as an artist, is 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 one thing as an artist that can be challenging is to find your voice, you know? Luckily, I feel like... I'm finding that now, finally. Um, and that's actually like becoming a real thing for me. Like I know who I am, like and when I and when I go up on stage, but like in the beginning it was tough because you being an artist art artist objective is first and foremost, right? And whatever you do, it has to be genuine in you but also be entertaining as far as in my in my realm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, what the crowd might find entertaining or what, what the crowd will like, it's not what other comedians like. And so for me, I think what was hard is to like, kind of like block out the haters, you know? Or yeah. like block out like, you know, all the people that, you know, might not necessarily agree with what I'm doing. As far as comedians, like I've never, I've never had a t terrible set where it's like and like the crowd hate me but I've gotten booed by com comedians while I'm getting a standing ovation from the crowd so hmm. I think as an artist to uh, bring that all in together I said I think as an artist one of the things that I've done to overcome is just to push and also just to get out of my own head because the thing is sometimes when I have a bad set 
Like I've gotten like sometimes I'll do a bad set and then I won't do comedy for like a month and a half. Mm-hmm. You know? And yeah. Just fuck you up. You know? Yeah. And one thing, one thing that I've had to push myself in is especially when I have a bad set that I have to do comedy. If not right after that, then like in the same night, I have to do it the next day. Like you know, just cause wow. if not, if not, I'll like get that feeling that I'm not worth it or I'm not good enough. You know? Yeah. And that's not the case. You know, Papa George is the best. <laughs> so like when you go up there, like. Do it until it's good, until you're good, you know? Right. And, and then move on. But if you're already good, and you know that you're good, and you've done something that works, and then you have a bad set, that doesn't mean that you need to quit, like, you know, or, like, just stop, because mm -hmm. you're going to ruin yourself. And, and, like, the last thing I want is 10, 15 years down the line is that I'm kicking myself, like, damn, I could have been this guy, or I could have been this place with this, but I quit because I thought that I wasn't good enough. And for all the people that uh, that are seeing this, I just want you to know that when I, when I say Poppy Zora is the best, that sounds like a really cocky thing. But I want you to understand that, like, I say that because it pushes me to be my best all the time. And to go up there when I go on stage or whatever I'm doing, that I do it with excellence. So that slogan for me means that I need to pursue life and pursue everything I'm doing with excellence. You know? So, That's really good. Yeah. So whoever might think that I'm just a cocky bastard, it's not that. <laughs> but you know what? When you're confident, you're gonna people are gonna think that anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just how it is. After having this conversation, I realized that although it's not an easy straight road, it's very rewarding. If you never try at least once, you'll never know what your life could be. For me, it's never been about the money or the fame but about living up to my full potential and living what some call the purpose-driven life. Everything else is meaningless.